What's going on YouTube? This is your boy Jamelio7 with Simmons7 Gaming and in this video I kind of want to just go over what I think is going to be one of the top blood necromancer builds in all of Diablo 4. Yes, the game has only been out for about 10 days now, but uh, I can already see the potential in this build and I, I personally haven't seen anything else like it so far so i just wanted to bring it to you and like let you in on what i'm thinking and where i'm going with it first i want to start off with the headpiece the headpiece has 33 percent dexterity intelligence and willpower i have bone i have the bone spirit uh damages an enemy and gains a barrier equal to four percent of your base life for 10 seconds i also have two percent of damage reduction while fortified which will always be fortified in this build so that's important also on the chest piece you you have another sacred piece eight eight percent damage reduction while fortified eight percent damage for four seconds while picking up ores which will be plentiful uh, with this bill also you'll have the you'll have 13% uh, physical damage which will be all the skills that you're going to be using on this build uh, you you have 19% ultimate skill damage and you have damage in the elite enemies grant a barrier of 1867 let me point something out I have my advanced two tips on because I want people to see that there's room for improvement that this is a version one uh, part of a uh, type of bill and I'm only level 60 so this is my first Diablos but I uh, but I do want to show uh, what you can do when you think outside of the box because all I've ever been seeing is uh, million base bills where you have like a billion million uh, millions uh, flocking around and just swarming the field which is dope that's what necromancers do but I just wanted to show the other side of the coin uh, th this is my uh, my baby right here. Uh, it basically is a sacred legendary piece. Uh, the only way it could get better is if it was uh, if I got a legendary piece that already had to have four abilities plus the legendary. But as far as what what I have right now, you have two ranks of uh, bloodlands. You have 33% overpower, and you have a max roll of 9.1% crit chance. As you see, with all my pieces of gear, you can easily squeeze more out of the the base, the bare pieces that I have by just upgrading them. If you come down to the legs, we have two points in, uh, of corpse explosion, which I'll we'll get into on the skill side of it. We have 13 uh, percent damage reduction from close enemies, because that's where we'll be. We'll be right in the thick of things, dodging attacks, blocking attacks, doing big big hits. Uh, also, we have 11 percent of blood orb healing. Uh, with a with the aspect of basic skills grant 20 percent damage reduction which that'll be up all the time so you can basically say you have 20 percent damage reduction all the time so that's that's pretty big as well and you have the you have the boots now so with the boots uh, i want to apologize because i had i had some sacred boots that i had just got out of nightmare dungeon that were perfect and i accidentally sold them but I can kind of explain where I, where I was going at. I want to have willpower. I want to have max. Uh, I want to have plus three max evade if that's the highest it goes. Because the ones I saw had plus three. Uh, and you want to have dexterity. Uh, this piece of gear for this build has a bit of flexibility. You can use whatever you can fit on your feet at right here. But the one that I chose is blood mist triggers triggers corpse explosion on surrounded corpses which is dope like i blood mist detonates a corpse uh it's cool down is reduced by so your blood mist is always uh on a shark cool cool down and i'll get more into that and the skills um this is dealer's choice you can use a two-hander you can use any kind of weapon you want i personally have been in rotation between a wand and a sword i have a couple of notable weapons that I'm thinking about fi figuring out but as of right now I'm using uh, this wine that has 9.1 lucky chance 16% crit damage 15% uh, vulnerable damage 60 intelligence 29% overpower damage and it, uh, it can stand still for three seconds gives me 30% additional damage 
as far as the necklace or amulet I am using one that has two ranks of tides of blood for more damage overpower damage 8.2 overall damage 4% uh, of critical strike chance on injured uh, enemies and what I'm trying to roll on there at the present is willpower uh, because willpower I found that necklaces are the only one that gives percentage based willpower intelligence dexterity whatever so that's what I'm trying to get is the willpower in that slide at the bottom and for the aspect I have I have 26% uh, quick chance on on uh, injured enemies while and while I'm healthy I have the uh, 51 percent in additional uh, uh, control duration which is gonna be big and I'll get into that later in the video. on the on the first ring we have eight uh, percent physical damage which is that it's gonna be all the skills that you're gonna use blood and corpses uh, you got 3.6% critical strike chance. You have 13% overpower. And then you have 17% uh, increased strike chance when you, when you cast corpse uh, tendrils. You don't have to hit anything. You just cast it and you get 17% uh, more crit. And it, whatever for everything that it does hit, you're, you're going to get 51% uh, out of 60 more critical strike damage for the next ring you got the critical strike chance 21 percent million life i want to get a different ring for this but it's just so good as is um you got the 25 percent overpower and then you got seven percent with physical damage as well as the sacrifice bonus are increased by additional 25 percent for the shield, I'm working on a new shield. I'm just waiting to get another uh, crowded sage ward. Um, but you generally just want any kind of damage reduction, critical strike, and then you can probably pop a damage buff on to enhance other parts so it can make up for like not being one of those focuses or a two-handed weapon. When you go to Book of the Dead, Book of the Dead, we sacrifice the Skirmisher. The Skirmisher has a 6% critical strike chance, so we sacrifice that. The Skeletal Mage, we sacrifice uh, for the 50% overpower damage, which is key for this build and those big spike damage hits that you probably saw. And then you sacrifice the Golem, uh, and it is the Iron Golem that gives you 38% increased critical strike damage, which by the end of this video, you understand it's not all those are base numbers all right starting out with the skills we have hemorrhage hemorrhage is going to be your bread and butter your basic skill is going to build your essence and uh, it's going to hit for about 1300 uh, it's also going to have a 20% chance to give you a blood orb and every time every target that it hits because it can turn into AOE every target that it hits has a chance that uh, each hit has a chance to overpower. Also, uh, each hit will give you 1.6% to, uh, to be fortified and a 1.5% chance to fortify for each target hit 100% 100, 100 of your base health. Your first passive, you're going to put unliving energy. Uh, you're going to put one in that so that you can have access to unperfectly balanced which is going to increase your skill your core skill cost by nine which doesn't matter because you're only going to be using bloodlands anyway and increase the damage of bloodlands by 15. Uh, i know a lot of people like to use blood surge and that's cool but bloodlands is superior in, mo in most ways uh it has a lucky hit chance um it it will it will latch on to the first the enemy that it hits for three seconds but because of the crowd control bonus the crowd control bonus is going to make it last for four and a half to five seconds and it does five thousand damage that's at base before any crits before any overpower before any critical overpowers it's gonna it's gonna do five thousand damage base um that's big also each sub each subsequent enemy hit after the first enemy is gonna the lances are gonna pass through them which like 
creates like an AOE type effect. So if you're attacking the same target, each target behind it is piercing through, hitting that target, then hitting that target, then hitting that target, and all the targets are taking damage while it's hitting that target. And uh, the mod that we have on, every ninth blood, uh, blood lance will overpower which was do, do, do just stupid damage per your level. I'm level 60, so stupid damage for me at level 60 is doing anywhere from 20, 22,000 up to 39,000 hit on an overpower strike, and upwards of 60,000 on a overpowered critical strike. So that's just nuts. The next passive you want to use is huge flesh. Hued flesh is going to be the way that you generate your corpses. Anything that you do that damages a target will will generate will generate the corpses, and corpses will be used will be used going forward with your build. Blood mist, blood mist is your oh shit button. That's how I use mine. Blood mist is that there for uh, crowd control purposes, fortification generation, as well as. Uh, just overall damage in this particular build because like you seen on the feet once you proc blood miss you do all the corpses around your feet which should be plenty of corpses around your feet will start exploding um, you also have the mass that's going for every time you use the overpower skill you reduce the cooldown of blood miss which your blood miss should teeter around anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds because you're going to be popping overpowers all the time <clears throat> you wanted those two points into corpse explosion you can take parts from somewhere else to get it up to five if you want or even seven to get the maximum effect out of it it's just your mileage is going to vary based upon you come down to corpses your the, the the corpses you want to uh, use the passive amplified damage, which gives you nine percent increased damage on cur cursed enemies. My favorite is Iron Maiden, but you can definitely use the Crepify if you wish. Uh, you'll have extended, uh, you'll ex have extended um, slowed and damage re uh, reduction on enemies with the Crepify, as well as being able to stun and potentially get your cooldowns down. Uh, I just like I like Iron Maiden because it does damage whenever they try to hit you and it's free this passive right here makes it free as far as your you know, more blood passes you're going to put one point in gruesome mending you're going to put three points in coalescent blood I'm trying to roll another I'm trying to roll a, a rank two coalescent blood on my necklace with so that I can have a five here and a five there but coalescent blood gives you 80% increased damage while healthy which you all most of the time you will be uh, on your damage also uh, you'll have lucky hit uh, with drain vitality hitting enemies with a uh, blood skill has up to a 25% chance to fortify uh, you for eight percent of your health and then ties of blood uh, is basically a 50 percent increase on your overpower then you have corpse tendrils corpse tendrils is going to tie into your ring that gives you 17 percent uh, crit as well as 51 percent crit damage on top of doing what it already does which slows stuns and makes uh, uh, the targets vulnerable uh, via via the crowd control effect that it has as far as uh, like going full circle with your fortify going for full circle with your fortify uh, you're going to use necrotic carapace which uh, when a, a corpse is formed uh, from your skills your may all your minions fortify six percent of your of your base life that's going to be big this is with controversial I know a lot of uh, necromancer mains are gonna say why aren't you using a blood wave because it sucks like in my particular build it sucks why would you use it and at best case you're gonna you're gonna use 50 it's a 5200 hit best case base nothing else right then you think all right maybe the passes will save it slows and it's about 50 percent there's three other skills that cost little to nothing and have little cooldown at all that can do this and then blood wave leaves behind three pool uh three blood orbs the only way you can make it viable is by using the aspects that come off other pieces of gear in your build. And I think that's a waste. It's a waste of utility that you can get from somewhere else. Uh, the other thing, the other thing, 
the other thing is um uh, uh standalone standalone is is going to increase your damage reduction by 18 percent um and but you have you do have the ability to to, to drop it by to 16 percent but uh make it stronger by if you didn't want to sacrifice your golem and actually use your golem you could put your blood golem on and with your blood golem you are you he's going to absorb 15 percent of the damage you would take so that's a 15 15 percent damage reduction on top of having a a meat shield uh that's gonna uh, that's gonna drain life and, and do damage as well while you're in the thick of things so that's uh, that's that then this is uh the reason i decided to make this bill the momentum worry it increases all sacrifices by 60 percent on top of the 25 percent that you already have so that base like i said is pretty big when you look at the ultimate I use, I use Bone Storm. Bone Storm is probably by far the best ultimate that uh, that Necromancer has, and not for the damage. Cause the damage is good, uh, eight thousand over ten seconds, but it reduces it reduces the damage you take for fifteen by fifteen percent while it's active. Plus that that ties with the the fact that it's building a barrier on top of everything else for when it does go away and you uh you get 20 percent quick chance so it's safe to say you're going to be up at 100 percent roughly a quick chance most of most of the time or real close to 100 percent and you'll have close to 200 percent crit damage and this is at level 60 so it'll get this is going to get stupid as you get access to better rolls and better gear and level up like I, like i said this is a template this is version one and the the final skill that i use the final skill that I use is Rothman's Life. It gives you 10% uh, more health, which is, that's the utility aspect of it. But then it it helps you every 15 seconds do one big spike hit. So uh, as you probably saw in the clip preceding this, it, like I'm, I'm spiking for like 29,000, 42,000, 52,000, 67,000, stuff like that. So it's just, it's just something to think about, something to, something to focus on. Uh, and it's just for this particular build it is the best uh utilization of the skills that you have as far as the paragon tree the paragon tree i personally am going mostly by, uh, willpower and dexterity and i the, the one i didn't pick blood blood begets blood i picked the other blood uh the other blood tree that uh give, gives you the option of dexterity and willpower but that's pretty much that's pretty much it uh in in terms of the bill the other thing i wanted to show you guys is basically two things i wanted to kind of go through what the numbers look like as you can see overpower 635 quick chance is about 42 percent before you start applying all those buffs that i already have um you have all these different damage multipliers so you're doing crazy numbers on top of having different ways to reduce the damage as well and that's what i'm working on like my damage reduction fortified i want to get that to about 40 percent damage from close i want to get that to about uh 35 40 percent as well and then when you go back to the uh, when you go back to the abilities the abilities are the abilities uh the abilities i wanted to kind of touch on that and tell you why i have them set the way i have them i play on console so triangle is where my thumb kind of rests already so that's why you do corpse tender every 11 seconds uh you have your r1 you have your r1 for your ultimate you have your l2 because you can spam iron maiden as much as you want r2 you you're gonna hold you're gonna leave your index finger on r2 just leave it on there you press x for when you're trying to get extra damage or your extra survivability because it does both or just oh shit oh shit i'm about to die x and that'll take care of that and then you hold square uh you hold square and r2 the whole time because bloodlands and hemorrhage are going to take you through <laughs> as you probably say i was just holding r2 and square the whole time 
and then you just use other moves as you see fit. So it, it actually be like a lazy, a lazy build at the same time because you, if done correctly, you're practically unkillable. But that is the whole video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully I, I explained enough. Hopefully uh, you can see the trajectory of how strong this build can be, especially uh, with different pieces that you may already have or different ideas that you may want to implement with it. But like always, man, thank y'all for uh, the love so far. We're on the road to 20,000. We had a couple setbacks over the last month. But um, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, definitely leave them below in the in the comments. Please, please, please uh, like this video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more content. And until the next one, peace.